Malignant is an interesting throwback to the world of 80s slasher flicks. I'm sure many of you remember some of the weird and mystifyingly crazy movies we used to get in the 80s. Things like The Thing, great movie by the way, Scanners, The Ghoulies, weird comedy horror thing, Child's Play, The Hitcher starring Rutger Hauer at his most menacing, Hellraiser, the list goes on and on. And they all have that classic 80s feel, which means even when a movie is not that great, the aesthetic style and the feel mean that it is often still watchable. Long after you would have switched off a crap modern Hollywood movie, you'll still find yourself staring at the screen, actually feeling something and being part of the experience. I don't know what it is that 80 movies had that we've lost, but whatever it is, I wish they would get it back. And this brings me back to Malignant, which feels a lot like an 80s movie, especially in the opening scenes with the terrible acting, but the commitment to the bit, which is just quintessentially 80s. I've seen a few people describe this movie as unpredictable, and those people must have no mental insight. As I found between the title of this movie and the phrase used by a doctor in the first act completely gave the game away. I figured this movie out within the first 45 minutes of starting watching, almost to the smallest detail. But before I get started, please consider subscribing as that would really help me out, and if you like this content, give it a like. Okay, the opening scenes of this movie look very 80s and cheap, and the acting seemed so dodgy that I was wondering if I'd made a mistake in choosing to watch it, but I persevered. The movie starts out with a woman getting home from work and she appears pregnant, although that is not the first question that hit me when I saw her get out of her car. No, what I wondered was, what the hell happened to her rear windscreen, because the glass is just completely missing. I know that's a weird thing to notice, but it was just odd that there was no mention of it within the film, it's just the fact there's no glass in the rear of her car. Obviously I guess for the sake of the film they just took the glass out so you could see better through it, but it's just weird because you can see there's no glass. Next she goes into her creepy looking psycho house which is just about perfect for a horror movie, and then we are introduced to what appears to be her husband who is presented as one of the guys from the anti-white men Gillette advert. He was obviously supposed to be a redneck, he even wore a checked shirt, which is just so very typically Hollywood right now. It wouldn't have surprised me if they had put him in a MAGA cap and hung the stars and stripes in the bedroom, as well as show him watching wrestling on TV. They actually did do that last bit. After being introduced to him, he gets mad at her for entirely legitimate reasons, because she is not looking after herself and the baby by working late shifts. But then out of the blue, they decide that because they needed a plot device, they make the person who is worried about her and the baby's physical well-being suddenly start being very intimidating, and then lose his temper and violently slam her into the wall, causing the back of her head to bleed. This situation makes no sense. Why would someone who is worried about someone's well-being suddenly become very violent towards that person? It would have made some sense if they had had him punch a wall or throw some object, since we can glean from their conversation that she has had two miscarriages before, and that she had been warned by her doctor that she needed to be more careful or it could happen again. And her ignoring this advice, and no doubt his previous pleadings to look after herself and the baby, explains why he would get so mad, but then to physically assault her is just a step into stupidity. They try to explain this later by having a policeman mention that he had been violent with her before in the past, but this is simply an attempt to fix what is a stupid plot point. I know this sort of thing does occasionally happen in real life, but it's just such lazy writing that I just couldn't let it go without talking about it. This event could have been created in a much more believable way. Sorry about that little detour into why it's hard to find any good movies these days. The rest of the movie is just as stupid as that bit, but it is much less annoying because it's all completely unbelievable and in no way can you relate it to real life events. So the suspension of disbelief is much easier to achieve and absolutely required because this movie does its best to push the bounds of what will either make you laugh or make you jump. Depending on your disposition, it can achieve either one. For instance, my partner jumped at some of the scenes and sometimes hid her eyes while watching, though that was mostly because she was expecting some nasty, grisly scenes. I, on the other hand, spent the first three quarters of an hour figuring out what the story was, and then the remainder of the film either trying not to laugh or being exasperated at the stupidness of what was happening, especially in the latter part of the movie. The ability to figure out this story as it goes along doesn't make this a bad movie. In fact, the story was the most interesting thing about the film. Most horror movies are pretty predictable, and the director of this movie, in an effort to keep the details leading up to the final reveal accurate, left a few crucial clues in the preceding scenes, 
which at the very least means that as a kind of logic puzzle, it was quite fun. But unfortunately, that is where the good parts of the story end. The antagonist of this movie is so overpowered and over the top and comical that it seems ridiculous the idea that our female protagonist would have no idea what was going on. At the very least, she would have been wondering about certain events and why they seem to have affected her so much. At least, they should have affected her a lot, but she doesn't show any signs of it during the movie. The bad guy in this movie is indeed very creepy, and even after the reveal, he remains creepy. So from that point of view, it is a plus, but the nature of the bad guy means that, yet again, we need the suspension of disbelief. But that becomes very difficult because of the silly, overpowered scenes, which, while they do have an explanation, are still just stupid to watch and unbelievable. The scene in the police station near the end of the movie makes no sense whatsoever. I spent the whole thing with my face screwed up, shaking my head and saying, What? Really? That makes no sense. Oh, come on! I do give credit to the actors, because I found them all pretty convincing. A little cliche, but then it's an old fashioned style horror movie. If they weren't cliche, I would feel like something was really wrong. Now, to my final verdict. I found this movie mildly entertaining. It didn't have enough naivety for me to enjoy it at face value, like some of the great cheesy 80s horror movies, which left me thinking way too hard about the plot, which, when figured out, really left the movie feeling more like a comedy than a creepy horror. Especially the later overpowered bad guy scenes, which were just so ridiculous they bordered on dumb and seriously made me wish I'd watched something else. That said, the performances on the whole were pretty good, the story was quite interesting to follow. It's just a shame about the way the director presented the antagonist. It could have been a much more interesting movie. So, if you do find yourself at a loose end, then maybe give it a watch if you fancy something with the modern effects but with a bit of an 80s feel. Of course, if you want a movie with an 80s feel, then why not just watch an old 80s horror? Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, The Shining, The Thing, the Evil Dead, An American Werewolf in London, Pumpkinhead, Pet Cemetery, Christine, The Howling. I could go on and on and on. This has been Movie Suck. Wishing that Hollywood would rekindle that je ne sais quoi that made the 80s so awesome. Signing out. Leave a like, share, subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the flip side.